When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I was having a conversation with, with so I have, a, I don't have just one marketing company. I have like somebody that handles my TV, somebody that handles my radio, somebody, they're all different. And I like it that way. I think that it's, if, if you do start to have a, if the relationship starts going sour with, with either of those, any of the spokes on the marketing wheel, you can just remove that spoke and replace it. You know, you don't have to get rid of everything and then replace everything. So I, I like that, but I was having a conversation with um, the people that handle my streaming and TV ads. And so June was, was not a good month for us um, in 2024. And you know, when you have bad months like that, you start racking your brain, like what is it? And you go through all the things, you know, the average job ticket, the call volume, the conversion rate, uh, how many guys that I had this year versus last year. Um, and the person that I was talking to, my rep said, you know, I said, we're, we're ahead overall for the year, but man, I don't, I just, I just can't wrap my head around what happened in June. And he said, well, it's good to hear that you're ahead for the year because most of the, the clients that we have, say that last year was better than this year. And, um, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about that when they say, when, you know, I, I feel great about that because he was talking about me, but it, it does speak to what might be going on in in our current state of the, yeah, I hate to use the word economy. I, I'm not trying to get into that kind of, Talk, but the, the economy that matters is your economy and my economy. So I'm just, it was good to hear, but it, that we're doing better this year than we did last year. But some, some people aren't, you know, and, and everybody I think is trying to figure that out. Like, what is it? And how, you can only drill down so far to figure out like marketing doing marketing and you have to do marketing, whether it's slow or whether it's busy, you have to continue to do marketing. And there's no guarantee that all the money that you're spending on market marketing is going to come back. Like if it was, if it was that easy of a lever to pull, if you just pull the lever, Oh, we just got to run more radio ads, pull that lever. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't happen that way. No, it doesn't. It's it. You pull that lever, you run more radio ads, you run more TV ads. And for some reason it's like, Oh, we're, we're slower. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. Marketing is, it's a tough game, man. It's a tough game to be in because it costs a lot of money to do all the different things and it doesn't guarantee any sort of success. Yep. There is absolutely no guarantee. And it's so hard to track, you know, that it's not, it's not clear. It's not a, it's not a cut and dry answer. Um, and you know, the marketing philosophy of you've got to, somebody has to come in contact with your company in some sort of way, seven times before they'll remember you. You have to be, you have to be seen, you have to be findable. So whether or not you agree with running, running billboard ads, that is a lot of eyeballs that go by and they do see you. And there's not a, re there's not a return on investment that you can say, man, I'm glad I ran those billboard ads because this amount of work came in. Yep. Um, same way with, with radio. I mean, you can track your uh, website traffic with it because you know what time your ads are going to run. They're going to be running in the morning. Let's specifically talk about radio ads. You know what time they're going to be running you know, depending on what kind of plan you have, they're going to, you're going to be on the morning drive, maybe at lunch and on the drive home. So you can track the traffic that comes through your website, but you know, outside of that, 
you, you know, you, most of the time you just look at your um, job count and it's, it's a tough thing as a leader to yeah. know that you're doing all that stuff. And by all that stuff, I mean, all the spokes in the marketing wheel as Dan Antonelli um, lays out in his book, bland branded not blanded i always screw that up but he's you know he talks about you have to have a complete wheel with with the, with the appropriate spokes in it to make it a balanced marketing plan and um even when it's not even when it doesn't seem to be working you still have to do it and you still have to be um and this is one of the hardest things as a, as the leader you have to remain positive like who as a leader do you go to whenever you're like man i'm doing everything i can i'm doing everything i can and you still may go backwards yeah yeah it's tough you know it's uh and you know that makes the guys uncomfortable right like Oh, why do we? Have, why don't we have all the jobs that we had last year to go to? Where would all the jobs go? You know, um, and there's not always, or there's never really a concrete answer. It's never like, oh, well, it's this or it's this or it's that, right? It's just sometimes you're just shooting in the dark, and you're like, I, I don't know, I don't know why there's no yeah. calls this week or last week or the week before, or whenever it is, right? Um, but you know, service Titans a very powerful mm -hmm. tool because I can look at this week, this year, and this week, last year. Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I think ignorance it's too is powerful because I can look at this week, this year, and this week, last year, and yeah. it'll not almost, yeah, I mean, it like will it will almost make you, make you, you are feel constantly worse. comparing your performance. And, and with Service Titan, you can. You can you can drill down as granular as you want to go. And when you start fixating, especially when, when you know, like you start off a month and mm -hmm. you're like, all right, we're on track to, to beat whatever goal. I usually, I usually compare this month to date to last year's month to date. And because you're spending so much more in marketing and you're, you're growing as a company, it's not good enough to just match what you did. So you put that pressure on yourself to do better than what you did. And sometimes when you have a meteoric rise to success, mm -hmm. like when you were a smaller company and you have this astronomical growth, it's, it's just like when you go out and, and you shoot a good round of golf, when you've been shooting like absolute crap, you know, in previous golf outings and then you go out and shoot at 85 you're like man I, I got it you know and then you go back out and shoot a 105 and you're like oh man dude i don't understand it's not <laughs> yeah and it's not it's not a whole lot different <laughs> like thought i had it figured out months where we compare <laughs> uh february this year was an example like there were there were uh, 28 or 29 days in february is are there ever 29 days in february i think there are so, but that was one of our best months. Yeah, leap year. And yeah. then you try to figure out why, and you know, there are there are days when you hit home runs, as we call it in business. You know, there are days where you just everybody everybody uh, connects with the customer, and they they end up. Um, providing more service for the customer and it turns into a great day. Like for, for, for instance, in the last five days of last year's June, we had like the best week that we've had in a long time. So, you know, cause you, you, you try to compare the jobs that you did. Okay. This job count, it was, we were, we were rocking along about the same. And then we get to the very last week of last year's June and we had like, 68 jobs where it, that didn't happen this year. So therefore we, and the job average ticket was great last year. 
and and this year we didn't have that explosive week where um, some big jobs were being completed, some uh, and just everybody had a, a, a higher number of jobs to go to, and it created this um, month as a whole where you look at it and you're like, why can't why didn't we do that this year? And you know. Just being able to figure that that out is one thing that most most business owners can't do, right? Most business owners um, in the in the plumbing business that are, um, I would say, one to even four trucks, they they may not be able to figure that out by looking at it if they don't have Service Titan or whatever platform they have. You got to know. I mean, you got to be able to figure that out and. Even even though it may make you feel worse, at least at least you know, at least you know what to try to work on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's the the standard KPIs you got to be looking at is opportunities, um, you know, average mm-hmm. job ticket, conversion rate, call booking rate. You know, um, if you know, and it's it seems to be that in those slow times, everything stays even and it's just those opportunities drop down and it's, it's tough to overcome that when it's like, Oh, mm-hmm. we're doing all this marketing. We're doing, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Google, all the stuff. Right. And then it's, but we have had, we have half as many opportunities as we had last year. You know, absolutely. That's a tough thing to overcome. That's, that's why mentally, it's so hard, right? I would say that, just doing the things mechanically is no different, but mentally accepting the fact that you're doing all you can do. And then the result is less than what you're expecting or less than what you maybe less than what you really need. Um, but I will say this, like I was having a conversation yeah. with, with, with my general manager and, um, Typically during slow times, that's when that's when the the microscope comes out and you start trying to figure out what what is it what 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 is it that we're not doing that we should be doing and um, sometimes you, you get all the way through that process and um, when you're systemized it's 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 easy to 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 look in and say well are we doing this or, or how are we serving the customer what process are we going through to serve the customer. Um, and you can usually find, you know, either either somebody's leaving for a dispatch fee a lot of the times or somebody's uh, selling the lowest option or somebody is just their average job ticket is way lower. And, you know, that that's something that, that, that you have to deal with. But but something that that made me feel good is for when my, you know, when the guys were not were not producing and it was because the the average job ticket was low. So in, in turn, no, I'm sorry. So the job count was low. So in turn, we had a bunch of guys sitting around the shop and that can create some angst. You know, you got these guys sitting around and it's your job to provide for them. And my general manager said, you know, these guys don't like sitting around the shop either, you know? So because, and and I'll kind of step back a little bit and say it was because, you know, our guys get paid a minimum, whether they have work or not. Um, It's a base pay. And the thought entered my mind, like, well, what if we're just satisfied with the base pay? And my general manager assured me, these guys don't want to sit around the shop either. Like you want them to be working. I want them to be working. And I can assure you that they don't want to be sitting around the shop either. They, they get used to making a certain amount of money and and they're hungry for, for the jobs. And that manifests itself in a way where if a job comes in later on in the afternoon, they're jumping on it because maybe they sat around the first part of the week or the first part of the day. And that, that, that does make, make me feel good uh, as the business yeah. owner. And it was just good to hear that, you know, like 
whatever reality you're creating in your mind, I want you to know that these guys are, they are ready to go to whatever job comes down the pipe, but there's gotta be a job that's coming down the pipe. Yeah. 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 It's tough, but you know, you said before, it's like you could have a really bad month, right? And it feels like the yeah. end of the world. And then you look at year over year and it's, you're ahead of where you were last year. So it's yeah. important at times. It's important to look at the big picture, right? To look at, you know, Hey, we're, we're halfway done with the year. Am I ahead mm -hmm. of where I was last year? Or am I behind where I was last year? If I'm a similar size company, right? Um, and, you know, it's real easy to say, Oh, last year we, uh, you know, last year we grew by 250%, you know, why aren't we growing by 250% again? Well, sometimes it's, you know, Correct. that, that's just a not, that's not a reasonable expectation, right? Um, we want to, you know, year over year, we want to be a little bit ahead. You know, if we're staying the same size and our expenses are staying similar, we want to be mm -hmm. a little bit ahead of where we were last year, right? Because that's the trimming the fat stage, right? There's there's the explosive growth, there's the aggressive growth, there's regular growth, and then there's, hey, we're the same size we were last year. Let's start let's start trimming the fat. Let's get better at the processes. Let's start watching the average job ticket go up. Um, and I mean, especially if you could look at it like, you know, like you said, you had less opportunities, you know, if, even if you have less opportunities, but you're still for sure making more money, you're doing more right? with less. That, that's and, a good thing. You know, there are, there are a lot of good yeah. things that come out of doing more with less. Your guys aren't being mm -hmm. run into the ground. They're learning how to point things out, service the customer, be more thorough, spend time getting to build that rapport with the customer and really taking every job and doing the most they can do with it. Because when you go through a time where they may have one job a day, some guys, I mean, I've been through times where my guys, they may get one job a day for a sustained period of time. And it's our job as the owners of the company to provide that work and, and when you're doing all you can do and it's still trickling in, there's this, in a good organization, there's this culture of, I'm just going to be grateful for whatever job comes down the pipe, you know, and, and when I do get that job, I'm going to make sure that I'm thorough with my plumbing inspection. I, I give credible options on what they call me for, but also, Hey, while I'm here, I want to make sure that we don't miss anything. I'd hate for you to, to call me back in a month saying, Hey, why didn't you point this out? My, my water heater is, is leaking now, or it's, it's not working now. If I would have known that it was, you know, 14 years old, maybe I would have changed it. So yeah. all of those things, the, the steps in your sales service process, they get tightened up in the, in, in slow times. And, but there's also too, I wanted to touch on a little bit of, Yep. never enough mentality. And I think that that's, it's common for entrepreneurs for things to never be enough, no matter how good it is, it's never enough. And I think that that's a real problem that comes up when you're not in the truck anymore, when you're only focused on numbers, when you're, you know, you know, like, neither you nor me have dealt with customers face to face in a long period of time. So what tends to take the place is numbers and um, all you're doing is trying to make those numbers, not all you're doing, but mm -hmm. sometimes we can get so focused on making the numbers better that we forget that there is a, Hey, this, this may not be, perfect and it may not be what we projected, but is it good enough? Like, do, do we know what good enough is? It's always 
we've got to be better at this. We've got to do better at this. This average job ticket is lower than it was last year. You know what? You 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 can you can easily become strictly numbers and data driven and lose sight of the good things that are happening, despite whether you're doing better or worse. You ever have that? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's real easy to lose track of. Well, hey you know, conversion rates up and average job tickets up. And, you know, like we said, doing more with less, but it's, it's very easy to get fixated on, well, this marketing's not working or we're getting less calls or we have less calls than we had last week. Or it's, you know, cause you're just sitting there behind a computer screen and you're not out in the field. Right. So it's like, and I would say it's probably harder for me than it is for you. Cause you went, you know, you added a couple yeah. guys last year, right? But yeah, you know, I three X my company last year, basically. So it's like looking at those year over year numbers. It's like it's really Absolutely. hard to not expect it to be the same thing this year, right? Um, but but sometimes you just get to a point where it's like, hey, we we can't triple the size of the company anymore, right? Like we're gonna add a guy here, or a guy there, or whatever. But it's like it's it just, it's just not there right could because you start doing everything you start doing the lsas you do the website you do the branding you do all the other advertising avenues right and it's that allows you to kind of start that explosive growth process yeah but there there, it's not there is a dark side over and a long period of time because i because i know you and i know i've seen your company and its growth there is a there is a dark side to that media meteor rise to you know when you when you risk a lot and you put a lot of your time and money and everything that's required to build a company the right way and you start to see that exponential growth and you hire <clears throat> hire people and they get on board and they're buying into the system and they're starting to I mean, it's starting to run like a, it becomes a successful operation. But, what, you know, at what point does it level off before you have to put a whole nother set of systems in place? Or, or how, I mean, how big do you, mm -hmm. you, you have to start having these conversations with yourself. Like, how big do I want to be? How much, like, I'm, one of the good things is that I, I am able to focus on these numbers. I am in the office. I am able to work on my business and not in my business. But you do get to a point where it's like, how, how much is enough? Like, what am I going to be upset about if we, if we do take a little step backwards? And that's something that, that would be a new thing for us, maybe, because it's just been so much work getting to move forward and it works. I mean, it works. It, 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 you start to see it and you get upset when it, when it doesn't continue. And it's, you, you'd really do have that. That's a mental, that's a mental thing where you do have to have that conversation with, are we going backwards? Or are we just not going this three X? Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough thing to overcome, but, um, the bright side is yeah, you're still alive. Right. Richard likes to say, <laughs> you ain't, no one's dying today. Right. Like you ain't going to die today. Um, so, um, yeah, but it's, it's a heavy conversation. Um, you yeah, know, I'm glad we had it. Right. But it's not something I want to continue to beat down on, like, because, you know, <laughs> for anyone that's listening out there, it's like, they can listen to this episode, they'd be like, oh, crap. Like, yeah. There's, there's, there's tough times, even when you get to no, be that no. size, you know what I mean? So I don't want to make it seem like, hey, it's the end of the world. You're going to die or anything like that. Um, I just, you know, I think it was a good conversation to have. And, um, 
you know, this I think is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode than we usually do. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's not. It's is, not a depressing. Uh, it's just a real thing. You know, there are there are reasons. There there long. are reasons why <laughs> not a lot of plumbing businesses succeed, and you have to be able to be mentally tough enough to get through the tough time. There are a lot of great times. We can yeah. spend all day talking about the great times. <laughs> yeah, way way more fun, you know. But you know. You, you, <laughs> Well, that's a lot. I think fun. if people listen to the whole library that we've that we've established and and that we continue to contribute to, there are there are things that are scary about business. There are things that are wonderful about business, and you have to take the bad with the good. You know. All right, man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. All right. All right, well, that does it for this episode of The Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.